Hey there guys, Mike here. Thanks for clicking this video. Welcome to my shop. If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. I have similar videos like this. This video is a Coleman tech video. Um, I'm in the process of restoring this 242 here. Um, it kind of looks like this when it's all put together. So this one is a 37, a 242B. In the process of trying to restore this, I realized that uh, it does not want to pump up at all, meaning that I could not force any air into the tank. And I'm not sure what the issue was at the time. So what I ended up doing was I used my car check valve removal tool and I remove the check valve. So this check valve actually sits down in this tube and you can hear there's a little ball in here. So what I ended up doing is cleaning this. I boil it in vinegar for about 10 minutes and cleaning it up, put it back in again, and it still wouldn't pump up. So that led me to believe that there's actually the tube, the air tube that goes to the bottom here and it goes into the top was plugged. So what can happen is if, if fuel gets left in here or gets left on its side, um, the pump tube it, itself, the air tube that goes up the top of the tank here, can actually get plugged or get some garbage in there or just kind of get corroded and you can't pump it up anymore. No matter what you do, compressed air, whatever you want, you can't get it out. So the solution to that is try to force something to go through there. And the only real way you can do that is by using some type of like a hydraulic method. So what you need to do is figure out how to get the stuff out of the air tube that's in here. And it's pretty hard to fish out. So what you want to do is remove the check valve. So have it out. So you can use that uh, handy dandy check valve removal tool. And if you haven't seen one of these, I'll put a link in the description below. You can get one of these. Pull the check valve out because you don't need that in there. And what you want to do is use something viscous. So this here is lubricant, pneumatic tool lubricant. It's like an oil. It's pretty viscous. And you can pour that in. And once that's in there, put a probably about an inch worth of lubricant in there. You could use something like a socket, wrap that in plastic to make it really tight. So you want to make sure that you can find a socket that's really tight, wrap that in plastic, put something on the end there, and then you can give it a, a whack with a mallet and push that through. What I've done is something even better is I've turned down this piece of aluminum and it fits perfectly in here and it's really, really tight. So once again, you put the lubricant in there, uh, vegetable oil, motor oil, or this stuff. Get it in there about an inch, figure out where it is. Wrap this up so it doesn't go flying just in case, and then give it a good whack or give it a good push in. And that should express whatever's in the air tube. And in my case, it worked perfectly, and I'll show you what I mean. So to test to see if it actually worked is let's put this in. There's no check valve in here, so we'll just put this in. We'll make sure the thumb's on the hole. I'll put my finger on top here. Let's put some air into it. Keep my thumb on there and you can hear the air. Oh, there you go. So that worked perfectly. So let's go put this together and fire this lantern up. Well, I hope you found this insightful and why you can't put any air into your font. So if you check your check valve and that's okay, and you still can't push any air into it, then that your air tube is something you may want to look at. It's not a common issue, but it is an issue with these older lanterns. If you want something like this, please let me know. Leave a comment below and I can hook up to you. I do make these in small batches for fellow collectors and friends, and I don't have an issue making one for you either. Once again, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.